Flood is the overflow of huge amount of water onto the normally dry land. Flood occurs when the overflowing water submerges land and causes deluge. It is cruel and violent expressions of water. The word flood comes from the old English flood, a word common to Germanic languages. The EU flood derivatives defined a flood as a temporary covering by water of land not normally covered by water. In the sense of flowing water, the word may also be applied to the inflow of high tides. The flood is caused when the river bank cannot hold the high flow brought down from the upper catchment due to heavy rainfall. Areas having poor drainage characteristics get flooded by accumulation of water from heavy rainfalls. Flood are the most frequent natural calamities that India has to face almost every year in varying magnitude and in some other parts of the country. According to the estimate of National Commission on Flood, the area prone to floods are 40 million hectares and out of which a near about 80 percent of the area that is 32 million hectares of the area could be provided with a reasonable degree of protection. Before coming to the protection measures, we should know about the types and causes of floods. Floods are of various types. There are six main types of floods, namely riverines, estuarines, coastal, catastrophic, human induced and muddy. The riverine types of flood is again categorized into two types, slow kinds and fast kinds. The water runoff from the sustained rainfall or rapid snow melt exceeding the capacity of a river channel causes a slow kind of riverine's flood. And fast kind of riverine floods include flash flood resulting from the convective precipitation that is intense thunderstorm, heavy rainfall etc. Next type of flood is estuarines. Estuarine floods are commonly caused by a combination of sea tidal surges caused by storm forces winds. A storm surge, either a tropical cyclone or an extra tropical cyclone falls within this category. Then it is coastal types of floods. Coastal floods caused by severe sea storms or as a result of another hazard like tsunami or hurricanes. Then comes catastrophic floods. A catastrophic flood is caused by significant or an unexpected event like breakage of a dam or uh, another hazards like volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. Human induced floods. Human induced flood includes any type of accidental damage like damage caused by a workman to tunnels or pipes. Another type of flood is a muddy flood. A muddy flood is produced by an accumulation of runoff generated on croplands. Sediments are then detached by runoff and carried as a suspended matter on bed loads. Muddy flood should not get confused with mud flows. Muddy floods are therefore a hill slope process and mud flow are produced by mass movements. Now we come to causes of flood. Many floods are directly related to change in weather. The most common cause of flood is due to rainfall at extremely high rate or for an unusual long period of time. Sometimes flood occurs as a result of unique combination of factors that only indirectly include or involve weather condition. For example, a low lying coastal areas may be prone to flooding whenever the ocean is at high tide. Usually the causes of floods include two types that is natural causes and anthropogenic causes of floods. Under natural causes of flood, here comes high rainfall, snow melts, relief, coastal floodings. In high rainfall, heavy rainfall raises the water level and when the water level is higher than the river bank, the flood occurs. Because of global warming, the temperature of every year in, is increasing. The ice cap melts in spring, many water goes into the sea. The water raises the sea level and again it causes flood. Flood often occurs in lowlands. This is because river flow more slowly in low lying areas. If the water volume increases suddenly, the flood occurs. Coastal flooding. Flooding uh, flood usually occurs in coastal areas because they have high tides or storm. 
the sea level will raise if the sea level is higher than the level of the coastal low land automatically the flood occurs now we come to anthropogenic causes of flood it include deforestation poor farming poor water management and population pressure when we talk of deforestation large areas of the forest near the rivers has been cleaned because of human need demands there are no trees to soak up water there are no trees to build the soil together ultimately the large amount of soil and water are washed off by the rains into the river because of which the water volume increases in the river and again it causes flood poor farming some farming practices can also damage the vegetation cover so the soil will be washed into the river easily poor farming include two more factors overgrazing and overcultivation in overgrazing when the animal they graze too much of land the pasture is eaten away very quickly so the less vegetation cover is left over and soil is again washed off into the river and due to over cultivation when a piece of land has been used for farming for a long period of time the soil may become so infertile that no vegetation cover is left and again the soil is washed off into the river more easily which may cause floods the next cause is poor water management when the dams are poorly constructed or maintained they can easily collapse and these result into flooding population pressure because of the large amount of people everything is needed in demand like more water more food more woods more land etc which indirectly or directly lead to soil erosion and which may affect floods again the flood caused due to any reason may severely affect us in many ways effects of flood may be primary may be secondary or tertiary the primary effect of flood include physical damages flood can damage any type of structure like bridges dam uh, buildings roadways canals etc the secondary effect of flood can be seen on water supplies health food and plants the contamination of water due to flooding also causes the scarcity of clean drinking water the shortage of food crops can be caused due to loss of entire harvest and non tolerant species of trees can die from suffocation also the unhygienic condition prevailed due to flood spread many water borne diseases and the tertiary effects of flood includes the economic losses economic hardship due to temporary decline in tourism rebuilding cost food shortage leads to price increase in many countries the disease related to floods are water borne and food borne disease like cholera typhoid hepatitis a diarrhea dysentery vector borne disease like malaria dengue due to direct contact with contaminated water dermatitis conjunctivitis disease are caused and due to the exposure to water hypothermia respiratory tract etc diseases are caused even the flood effects on mental health like sleep disorder excessive grief and depression etc flood mitigation there are two main components of flood related studies first water that inundates and second land that is inundated geographical survey of india studies the shape and material of the land getting inundated and generate data on the area shape slope infiltration and permeability of soil of the basin drainage pattern landform and longitudinal and cross profile of the channels on the basis of these studies gsi produce flood hazards map indicating prohibitive restricted cautionary and flood free zones flood mitigation strategies which are included in the flood are structural and non structural structural measures are the in the nature of physical measures and help in modifying the flood while non structural measures are in the nature of planning and help in modifying the losses due to floods in the structural measures we keep the water away from the people and in non structural measures we try to keep the people away from the water uh, the structural measures of the flood include watershed management 
reservoir, natural water retention basins, building and on elevated areas. Watershed management, timely cleaning, desilting and deepening of natural water reservoir and drainage channels must be taken up. In reservoir also the entire normal water place should be cleaned on regular basis. Normal water retention basin, construction and protection of all the flood protection embankments like dam buildings etcetera should be taken into account. Building on elevated areas, the buildings in flood prone areas should be constructed on an elevated area and if necessary on silts and platform. Non-structural measures, now when we come to non-structural measures it include flood plain zoning and flood forecasting and warnings. Flood plain zoning, it includes restriction on the use of land on flood plains, it can reduce the cost of flood damages. Local government may pass law that prevent uncontrolled buildings or development on flood plains to limit flood risk and to protect nearby property. Flood forecasting and warning. In India, these are issued from different areas mostly by the Central Water Commission, Meteorological Department and by State Irrigation and Flood Department. Predictability. Predictability of a disaster is the key to understand its nature and therefore to assess the chance of disaster. Forecasting. For natural disaster that have a fair amount of inherent predictability, forecasting is the next step in disaster management. Forecasting has to be based on sound scientific principles and operational proven techniques. It has to be done by the authorized agency and individual who are expert and have and are accountable and responsible. Warning. Once a forecast is available regarding an anticipated disaster event, it has to be converted quickly into an area specific and time specific warning. The general warning of a public would be different from those required specially for the safety of a railway bridge during the cyclone condition etc. Therefore, quick communication is very important at the warning stage. Interrelationship The interrelationship between the predictability, forecasting and warning is self evident. To repeat a warning can only be issued on the basis of a useful and reliable forecast and a disaster can be forecast only if it has an inherent predictability about it. Disaster preparedness for flood. Disaster preparedness could be defined as the detailed planning for the prompt and efficient response immediately as soon as the anticipated event materializes. Time effort has to be very comprehensive inclusive of all public education, awareness campaign ahead, provision for the ensuring of timely warning, development of orderly evacuation plans and preparation for the providing the evacuees with food, clothing, shelter on emergency basis. The speed and efficacy of the community reaction to save life and mitigate suffering and losses is determined by the adequate planning, training and rehearsals. The very basic step in vulnerability reduction will be to identify such high risk areas, prepare risk map showing the likely risk at different probability level of flooding and make this knowledge available widely. The framework of flood risk assessment and risk management including in, included in disaster preparedness for flood plan includes organize to prepare the plan, involve the public, coordinate with the other agencies, assess the hazard, evaluate the problem, set goals, review the possible strategies and measures, draft an action plan, adopt the plan, implement, evaluate and revise the plan. You can prepare for flooding and other disaster by the assembling a disaster supply kit. Take this kit with you if you are in an evacuating place. This kit may include a portable battery operated radio and extra batteries, flashlights and extra batteries, first aid kit and manuals, emergency food and water, non-electric can opener, essential and pre prescription medications, cash and credit cards, study shoes, extra clothes and bedding, food supplies for pets etc. There are some management practices which can be followed before a flood, during a flood, after a flood etc. Before a flood, to prepare for a flood you should avoid building in a flood plain unless you evaluate and reinforce your home.
evaluate the furnace, water heater, electric panel if susceptible to flooding, install check valves in sewer traps to prevent flood water from backing up into a drain from your homes, construct barriers to stop flood water for entering the building. Seal walls in basement with waterproofing compound to avoid seepage. Now, during a flood, if a flood is likely in your area, you should listen to the radio or television for information. Be aware that flash flooding can occur. If there is any possibility of a flash flood, move immediately to a higher ground. Do not wait for instructions to move. Be aware of stream, drainage channels, canyon and other areas. If you must prepare to evacuate, you should do the following before evacuating. Secure your home if you have any time. Bring in outdoor furnitures. Move essential items to an upper floors. Turn off the utility at main switches or valves if instructed to do so. Disconnect electrical appliances. Do not touch electrical equipments if you are wet or standing in water. If you have to leave your home, remember these evacuation tips. Do not walk through moving water. Six inches of moving water can make you fall. If you have to walk in water, walk where the water is not moving. Use a stick to check the forms of the ground in front of you. Do not drive into the flood areas. If the flood water rises around you, uh, abandon the car and move to a higher ground if you can do so safely. You and the vehicle can be quickly swept away. Driving flood facts. The following are the points to remember when driving in a flood condition. Six inches of water will reach the bottom of a passenger car causing loss of control and possible stalling. A foot of water will float many vehicles. Two feet of rushing water can carry away from most vehicle including sports utility vehicle and pickups etc. After a flood what one can do is Listen for news report to learn whether the community's water supply is safe to drink, avoid flood water, water may be contaminated by oil, gasoline etc. Avoid moving water, be aware of areas where flood water have receded, stay away from domed power lines and report them to power company. Return home only when the authority indicate it is safe to you. Stay away out of any building if it is surrounded by flood water. Use extreme caution when entering buildings, there may be hidden damage particularly in foundations. Clean and disinfect everything that get away, mud left from flood water can contain sewage and chemicals. Now if you have find any survivor, how to reach and help those survivor? In that case, allow the survivor to talk about the experience, reassure that the symptoms are normal. Don't take that individual's anger personally. Continue to reach out to any survivor who may reject help or isolate themselves. Be understanding of children who cling, suck their thumbs, wet their beds, cry, scream, withdraw and act out. If you are unable to help personally, encourage the survivor to accept help from someone who is more expert. Flood prone areas in India. 12.5% of the country's total area is flood prone. Flood plain and delta of Ravi, Satnaj, Yamuna, Ganga, Kosi, Brahmaputra, Mahanadi, Damodar and their tributaries and distributaries are flood prone areas in the India. Though the North Indian plain prone to the flood more, the Indian flood prone areas can be categorized into three divisions, Ganga Basin, Brahmaputra and Barak Basin. Central India and Deccan River Basin. And when we talk about flood prone areas in the world, many coastal countries and continents are flood prone uh, in the world. But the most flood prone countries in the entire world is Bangladesh, suffering from heavy monsoon rains every year. Flood are common and mostly natural disasters. When river overflow their banks, they cause damage to lives, property, infrastructure and crop etc. Flood can occur at any time, but weather pattern have a strong influence on when and where flood are likely to occur. 
mitigation measures both structural and non structural measures and preparedness plan are essential for saving the life and livelihood from the flood awareness among the common people is also of great significance and many volunteered agencies ngos like fema etc helps in avoiding the ill effects of the flood mm -hmm.